Today is Saturday, March 27th, and this is Unoya, spoken by Elswith. Okay, as promised, I do have recipes to share. Well, I have the inspiration fodder for you to look up the recipe. The fun for me is knowing that these will always be tied in to my grateful followers who receive their reward for sharing. Other fun includes a follower saying he didn't expect to Google meatloaf lyrics first thing in the morning. And he celebrated his Friday by rocking the Bad Out of Hell album on his work commute. Uh, we've no homework today. It is Saturday after all, but I will give you a permissive circumstance at the end. So the first hometown favorite food is very stereotypical for hometown favorite food and that different hometowns would definitely argue about which one makes the best one. And that's oat cakes. <laughs> if you just want to spend a bit of time learning about British culture, look up oat cakes. You will find Scottish crispy ones, you will find others that look like pancakes, and, well, None of them really match the American version of pancakes or cake. You often throw like cheese and bacon <laughs> or whatnot on top of these. I know some people put bacon on top of their American pancakes. I'm just saying they're not meant to be sweet from what I can tell. Uh, another one, it's a French Canadian meat pie and I've waffled back and forth. I'm not going to try to say it, <laughs> but it's usually reserved for Christmas time. And this follower sounds like he's trying to perfect it. And churros. I think every theme park out there seems to sell churros. The interesting thing is the one that my followers hometown is known for the recipe is a closely guarded family secret so you wouldn't find that one another follower shared that his hometown doesn't really have a signature meal but there's a particular diner um, that has like everything from the america's hodgepodge cuisine right and he writes, we spent many a lonely high school night there, wishing we had girlfriends and not the table jukebox and french fries, and that at his house, the known dish was Swedish pancakes. There's pancakes again. Oh, uh, oh, and to round out our cake experience, <laughs> the other one that was shared are um, crab cakes. And when I switched to, well, readopted being vegetarian a while ago, I don't know why crab was so tricky to give up. I do know part of it is because of crab cakes. The other part, which isn't an issue for me here in the UK, is uh, in the Low Country in the US, a lot of people make a she crab soup that is utterly amazing. So now it's time to prepare yourself. And because it's Saturday, it just lays out in any position that feels right. Unless, of course, you're on public transport. Be polite. <sighs> Breathe. in your favorite way. Being sure though to inhale deep and exhale fully. 
but add in those pauses where you need them, either full of a nice deep breath or in that lull of having just expelled stress going, tension going, being open, open to today's words, to finding the right vibrations, the hum, scanning over your body, noting if you have that same spot that loves to hold tension. For me, it's usually my shoulders reminding myself to lower and back. And feeling that pleasurable release as tension goes. For today, we don't have just one word. I have three phrases given to me, but I'm going to wrap them up together under the word genuine. The first is at peace, chosen, as he says from my hope for coping with long-standing emotional trauma this year. The other is, I will love myself, and he says, because it has been difficult. And finally, open and approachable. Without my missteps, allow others to connect with me and find me useful. I put these together under genuine because the vibrations from them resonated in a similar way. It's hard to heal from trauma when you have so much else cluttering up your world. It's hard to love yourself if you're comparing yourself to others and it's definitely hard to be open and approachable without being genuine. When the pandemic started, when the lockdown started, there was this big flurry of you must be productive and do all these things with this newly found free time. And if you didn't, well, surely that meant you never wanted to do it in the first place. Because now you had no excuse, you had so much time. But it wasn't good time, was it? Not with the news and the counts and the worries and the wondering and... Well, sure, there are definitely happy moments and shared experiences, and I think everybody I know watched The Tiger King. But it is okay to embrace a genuine, simpler life. If you find yourself always trying to flee and run away from that unexceptional life, thinking you need to collect titles and hobbies and add to that Instagram. What would happen if you stepped off that? If you decided you didn't want the big life, you wanted a genuine one. Right for you. No more comparison, no more seeing what other people are up to. But doing what's right for you. How would others, other genuine people, see you? And how much more could you love yourself if you didn't keep thinking 
you had to do more. Take your minute to reflect and then I'll give you today's permissive circumstance. Today's permissive circumstance is simple. If you gave yourself a break yesterday or today, you've met it. No cheating. Did you honestly decide to cut yourself a break yesterday or earlier today and follow through on it? This can be a task you realize didn't need to be done, a meddling, interruptive thought that you pushed away or even a long, quiet bubble bath instead of doom scrolling. 